Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to whatever number we are on <laughs> in my bookshelf tour. Uh, I've been kind of bulk filming these because we're near the end now, and these are coming in. I don't know why the camera just went blurry. These are coming in super useful for me writing my uh, memoirs, and also it's nice just to have like a YouTube based record of all of the books I own. So, um, yeah, without further ado, let's continue. So, here we have Construction of Magic and Other Poems on the Immortality of the Human Spirit by Louis Allen Swartz. Uh, not really my kind of poetry, to be honest. I'll read you one, though, in case it's your kind. Here is Making Dinner. Watching from my high chair in the pre-dinner dusk, utterly aware and concentrating. Mother in apron, deft hands shelling peas, waning light through kitchen window. In high chair, straining to understand. Daddy left a while ago, and Daddy never came back. Mummy told me he went to God. Will Mummy go there too? And where is it they would go? Would I go there as well? No, Mummy won't go there. Mommy is forever and always. Dinner roast nearly done. Wonderful smell warms my hungry tummy. Mommy chopping salad on wooden block. Smiles, mother smile at me. How could mommy be other than forever? So yeah, there is that. Here we have a fortune box, stories by Madeline Swan. Madeline Swan is a fellow booktuber, so definitely go and check out her channel. She writes sort of bizarro fiction, and this is a sort of a short story bizarro collection, sort of like weird fiction. They're all tied together. Uh, basically, people are getting these sort of surprise packages in the post that do very strange things. I'll link below, actually. I did a fuller review of this. Here we have Julia Suzuki, Yoshiko and the Gift of Charms. Suzuki was one of my first clients at my first jobs uh, here in Buckinghamshire. And it turns out she came from the same small town in the Midlands that I come from, Tamworth. So um, we'd probably both lived there at the same time and then suddenly we started working with each other at random through an agency 150 miles away, which is kind of cool. I'll read you the blurb of this. It's kind of like a YA novel come with a kind of an anti-bullying message. In the land of Dragor, amongst the smoking mud pools and around the fire which must never go out, live seven dragon clans hidden from man. Their great war is over, but still all is not well. The coming of a strange egg heralds the arrival of a dragon whose like has never before been seen. Will Yashiko bring a blessing to the clans, or a curse? Dragor's destiny awaits. So yeah, Yashiko is a little bit different to the other dragons, and he gets bullied for it, and they even say it might cause like the end of their civilization, and it turns out maybe his advantages are... You know, good. Okay, here we have William Strunk Jr. Well, it's Strunk and White, The Elements of Style. Just a very important stylistic guide in terms of spelling, grammar, how to use words, tenses, all of this stuff. Uh, kind of, I think it was required at my university, but it's one of those that every writer should, should have. Here we have a boob, so my video is going to get demonetized. But this is Perfume by Patrick Suskind, The Story of a Murderer. Um... I almost think that the less you say about this, the better, really, especially because it's kind of entered popular culture now, and so a lot of people already know what this is about. It was basically a haunting tale in which, in which the, the murderer is kind of the character you follow and the, the one you sort of feel for. I, I don't want to say too much about it. Just, just You should read it. It's a classic. Here we have Kushan to came. Yeah. Bloody Nora, biggie. And the neighbour just walked past, so the cat gets scared. Here we have Kushan Takemi, Battle Royale. Uh, the film is based on this novel. I actually think the novel is probably better. We have some cool stuff here, like a map with all of the zones on and stuff like that. And um, yeah, it's just, just, wow, you know? We also, I think it's quite cool how at the bottom of each of the chapters, it's got like X number of students remaining, 14 students remaining. So yeah, I would definitely recommend the book if you're a fan of the film. It can be quite heavy going, but the translation's pretty good. It's just a long old book, you know? Here we have Robin Talley, Our Own Private Universe. This is uh, like about a bisexual uh, religious girl who goes to church camp and sort of falls in love with another girl, basically. And I was sent this from either the author or the publisher. I can't remember. Um, it's a young adult novel. And actually, I've seen a lot of people talk about Robin Talley on BookTube, including occasionally about this book. So it, I'm, I feel like kind of a hipster that, that I was sent a copy of it. And yeah, I enjoyed it. Especially considering, I, I guess like more, it was more the, re, the like the religious side and the church camp of it that was quite alien to me. Like I have like gay and bisexual friends and stuff. So it's not, you know, my uncle's gay, for example. Uh, my good friend Michael Israel Jarvis, who's one of my favorite indie authors, came out as bisexual recently and fair play to him, you know. So that is just a part of my social circle, but I don't really hang out with people who go to church camp. So so that for me was more eye-opening than anything else, you know? 
Here we have Skim by Mariko Tamaki and Jillian Tamaki. They are two sisters or cousins. Uh, and it's a graphic novel about this girl called Skim. And uh, I think we need like more of these. Like uh, She's um, called Kimberly Keiko Cameron. I think she's Korean maybe. And... Um, but she's kind of a misfit at school and not one of the popular kids and she gets bullied again just for being different and um, and I think it's sort of semi-autobiographical as well and uh, just have a lot of respect for stories about like that in general. Here we have some Sean Tan, The Red Tree. Uh, this is almost like a poetry collection, like a visual poem. So I'll read you a little bit of it. Uh, here we go, the megaphone girl. Let's get into it. Sometimes the day begins with nothing to look forward to. And things go from bad to worse. Darkness overcomes you. You see what I mean? It it, it feels like poetry, even though technically it's not. And uh, Sean Tan is just fantastic. I mean, speaking of Sean Tan, here I have The Arrival, which uh, won prizes and stuff for being uh, a novel without any words, basically. So it's all told through the images. There are no words at all throughout it. But as you read through the images, you can kind of interpret the story yourself. So I think it was really well done. And uh, just the visuals are stunning as well. Up next we have Adriana Taylor, The Story of Control. And this is a memoir by a dominatrix. Uh, and so it says here, Adriana Taylor makes no bones about the fact that she is a dominatrix, a woman providing a service of sexual domination for those whose secret lives demand the adult age play of kinky BDSM erotica. The stories of Adriana's dominatrix sessions are eye-opening and can be both hilarious and raunchy. Yet there is another side to Adriana, one that is far away from her sexual fantasy self, the indomitable Mistress Haley. She is a woman of deep emotions for whom romance and sex are fundamental and intertwined parts of a monogamous contemporary love story. So yeah, it was an interesting little read actually. Like It's um, you know self-published and it's not like of the highest quality in terms of maybe it's visual presentation and even the editing in parts, but it's a fascinating read. Okay, here we have some Jodie Taylor. So this is Just One Damned Thing After the Another, A Symphony of Echoes and A Second Chance. These are the Chronicles of St. Mary's books about like time traveling historians. So I think, was I, I think I was sent the first one uh, for review after I was chatting to Accent Press who publish it at uh, London Book Fair. And then my, my uncle said that uh, he'd bought the first three and he basically DNF'd the first book. And also one book, one review on Booktube here uh, was recently saying she DNF'd the first book as well. But yeah, my uncle gave me books two and three, so I read those two. And I probably will continue with this series at some point because I do quite like it. Um, I can understand, though, at the same time, the criticisms of it. So it's not perfect, but it, it's, uh, you know, it's a time killer -y book. Here we have The Laura's by Sarah Taylor. So this was sent to me when I was on the shadow panel of the Young Writer of the Year Award. This was one of the books that was up for the award. And probably my second favourite of them, I would say. Uh, it's about, uh, well, let me read the back here. As Ma and Alex make their way from Virginia to California, each new state prompts stories and secrets of a life before Alex. Together they put to rest unsettled scores, heal old wounds and search out lost friends. But Alex can't forget the life they've left behind. And it's so well written because it's never revealed whether Alex is male or female. And to be fair, it's not that important to the story because the story is more about her, uh, his or her relationship with their mother. Um, but the way it's written, like there, I would have failed the writing test for this. Because as far as I remember, it just avoided person, like personal pronouns. So it's not like it said like he slash she or something. It just didn't use them at all. And did that throughout the entire book, and it just must have been incredibly difficult to do that, but it worked, and uh, it's a really touching, like, it's also like a road trip novel, and a story of, like, a relationship between a mother and their child, so, yeah, really cool. Here we have Wasted by Kate Tempest. This is actually a play, uh, three old friends, one remarkable day. For Ted, Danny, and Charlotte, life will never be the same again. The rapid-fire words of Kate Tempest paint a picture of lives less ordinary in, in, in an unforgiving world. A play about life, love, and losing your mind. Uh, I've seen Kate Tempest perform a few times. Uh, I used to really like her poetry, but basically then she started writing plays, and she also does a lot of like hip-hop style stuff, and I just don't get, get along with it, you know? Here we have Tapestry by Philip Terry. So this is basically using the bio tapestry to write this like intense prose poem, I guess you would call it. I I'm not even going to read any of it out because it's uh, 
I don't know. It's, it'd be very difficult to do that. It's very experimental. I think I'm also included... Yeah, I got this for free because I was a Reality Street supporter. So I basically pledged a certain amount per year and got a copy of each of the books as they came out. And also it got my name printed in the acknowledgements. Here we have The Apology of Arthur Tresbit by Robert Thayer. Uh, this is basically kind of a parody novel in which the end times are caused by this like financial analyst called Arthur Thayer. Arthur Tresbit, sorry. After landing a highly lucrative job in the city, Arthur Tresbit unwittingly gets caught up in an elaborate Ponzi scheme. But when he tries to extricate himself from the scheme, he inadvertently sets off a chain reaction that causes a global financial catastrophe that cripples the entire system and eventually leads to the destruction of civilization as we knew it. And this is basically him recounting how that happened. And you can kind of see here there's a lead weight on top of a house of cards and that's kind of a metaphor for how finance works. All right, these ones aren't particularly interesting but they are very cute. I got these for free at an industry event several years ago now, uh, provided by Lateral Group. And these are, I just filed them under the because it's the little book of data analytics, the little book of data management, the little book of green DM, the little book of integrated communications management, second edition, <laughs> the little book of integrated email marketing, the little book of marketing resource management, the little book of multi-channel design, and the little book of print management. Continuing on with the theme of the, we have the unsigned guide here, edition four. This was basically a website I used to be a member of, and it has all of this different information for musicians. So I'm trying to see if we've got contents here that I could tap into. This actually has like some written features in it as well, um, but then yeah, we've got like, here we go, alpha alphabetized lists of, uh, what are these? Record companies, music services, publishing companies, uh, what's the blue one here? Live performance, media, etc, uh, etc, et education and training, all of that stuff. And basically if you took out a year's membership on this website, you got a free physical copy of it. And that's what I did, and that's how I used to get gigs when I was about 19. Nobody knew me. Here is uh, Recommend This by Jason Tibble and Kirby Wadsworth. Gotta be honest, I don't really remember it, but it is published by Wiley. Delivering digital experiences that people want to share. Another non-fiction businessy book for y'all. Here we have one you probably recognise, Angie Thomas, The Hate You Give. Uh, I'm not going to go into what this is about. I will link to my review of it below, actually. What I will say is that I don't necessarily read a lot of, like, booktube books. But uh, when I do, I usually find them to be a little bit disappointing, to be honest. This one was not the case. This one I gave a 4.5 out of 5 to. And I, I would not be surprised if in 50 to 100 years, this is seen as like a classic of our time. Because it so accurately reflects what's kind of going on in the world at the moment. Here we have Hunter S. Thompson, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. In fact, I also have... The Rum Diaries here as well. I need to read some more Thompson at some point. I have really enjoyed what I've read. He's obviously the kind of the, I don't know, the uh, the starting point for gonzo journalism, the father of gonzo journalism, and basically developed his own style, which not many writers are able to do. So uh, big respect to him for that. Here we have Sandlands by Rosie Thornton. This was like a literary fiction kind of novel that I was sent. A few years ago, it was all right. It's probably like a 3.75, a 4 out of 5. I'll read you the blurb. From the white doe appearing through the dark wood to the blue-winged butterflies rising in a cloud as a poignant symbol of happier times, the creatures of the Suffolk landscape move through Rosie Thornton's delicate and magical collection of stories. The enigmatic Mr. Napish is feeding a fox rescued from the floods. An owl has been guarding a cache of long-lost letters. A nightingale song echoes the sound of a loved voice. In a martello tower on a deserted shore, Dr. Wybrow listens to ghostly whispers. Through the landscape and its creatures, the past is linked to the present and generations of lives are intertwined. Here we have Robert Tyne, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. This is the novelization of the movie. I prefer the first movie anyway, and the novelization isn't as good as the movie, so probably skip this one unless you're a massive fan. But it could be a cool one to go for, because they're currently filming uh, Bill and Ted 3. They're bringing back... Uh, Keanu Reeves and um, Alex Winters. Here we have Simon's Cat by Simon Tofield and also Simon's Cat in Kitten Chaos. Simon's Cat is actually a YouTube channel. It's an animated channel about the adventures of Simon's Cat. And these are just like little, uh, you know, cartoons. They're actually not as good as the animations because they they're usually just illustrations without any words and stuff. So it feels almost more like a sketchbook than like 
you know, I was hoping for a story, and there is a story there. You just have to make it yourself, you know? Here we have Colm Toibin, The Testament of Mary. This is basically telling the story of Jesus, but from the point of view of Mary, who is obviously his mother, if you believe in all that stuff. I mean, I'm, there probably was a historical Jesus and a, and a historical Mary. She probably just didn't have an immaculate conception. She probably just was a very naughty girl. But anyway, I picked this up in a charity shop because I, I just saw it, and I was like, someone was talking about Colm Toibin the other day. I picked it up, read it, and then realised it was Hannah Tay's book club of the month that month. So I inadvertently took part in that book club. Yeah, it was all right. I mean, um, for the kind of book it is, I preferred Philip Pullman's uh, The Good Man Jesus and The Scoundrel Christ, but both are pretty good. And now we move on to J.R.R. Tolkien. So here we have Letters from Father Christmas. And these are literally, he used to send letters to his kids every year. And so you can kind of see, like, some of the original letters here. And uh, they're all typed up as well, so you can read them, like... My dear children, there is a lot to tell you. First of all, a Merry Christmas. But there have been lots of adventures you will want to hear about. And then Tolkien, in his inimitable style, starts telling stories about what's been going on at the North Pole. It's very cute. You should read it. Here we have Tales from the Perilous Realm. Um, so this are five classic tales, including Roverandom, Farmer Giles of Ham, The Adventures of Tom Bombadil, Smith of Wotton Major, and Leaf by Niggle. All nice little stories you might want to add to your collection there. Um, you can also get most of those stories individually published or as part of other collections as well. So here we have the Book of Lost Tales, Volume 1, I believe. This is part of, like, the uh, history of Middle-earth. So uh, it was edited by Christopher Tolkien. Yes, yeah, so there's, like, 12 books in this series that I will uh, eventually, hopefully, get to. Uh, here we have the Children of Hurin, and this was, again, edited by Christopher Tolkien. Uh, when it says edited by Christopher Tolkien, I think it mostly means that T Christopher Tolkien pretty much wrote it. Uh, or rewrote it or pulled together, you know, all these different drafts and then stitched them together and stuff. But yeah, worth reading. Uh, here we have The Fellowship of the Ring, The Hobbit, The Return of the King. Obviously here we have The Two Towers and finally uh, The Silmarillion as well, which everyone says is like a difficult read and I didn't think it was. I just found it generally fascinating to be honest. So, um... It probably depends upon how fast you try and read it and stuff, because I was just reading, you know, 20, 30 pages at a time. But yeah, that brings us to the end of this bookshelf tour, and uh, that means we now, we only have three of these left. Uh, so I'm going to keep on cracking on filming those over the next couple of days, and then getting them edited and released to you guys. And then uh, this series will have come to an end. It'll be emotional. But anyway, on that note, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. And I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.